I'm Roger Pilon, Vice President for Legal Affairs at the Cato Institute. Before us now is a constitution aimed mainly at securing liberty through the rule of law, plus the core principles of private property. We're ready at last to discuss the basic law we need once we start interacting, committing wrongs, and making contracts. As we saw earlier, when we violate rights, we create new special rights and obligations. So too when we enter into contracts. We'll discuss freedom of contract in the next session. Here we discuss torts and crimes. And again, we'll cover only the basic principles. Tort comes from the old French for wrong or injustice. Torts are acts or omissions that injure or harm others by taking what belongs rightly to them, free and clear, their lives, liberties, or property. Torts take many forms, battery, ranging from a simple touch to serious attacks, assault or a credible threat of imminent battery, negligence or injuring another by failing to take reasonable care, trespass to property, defamation, intentional infliction of emotional distress, imposing excessive nuisance or risk, production or sale of defective or dangerous products leading to injury, and more, much more. Tort law has two main aims. First, to enable injured parties to hold those who injured them liable and thus obligated to make them whole, usually by compensating them for their losses, but also by enjoining or blocking ongoing harmful activity. And second, tort law aims to deter such acts by holding wrongdoers thus liable. When the parties are unable to settle their differences privately, often through insurance, both aims are served by victims bringing civil suits against their wrongdoers. In such suits, the victim or plaintiff must prove his injury, that it was caused by the defendant, and often that it was due to the defendant's negligence. The defendant may have defenses, for example, that he acted in self-defense, or that he took all reasonable care to avoid the harm, or that the victim consented or was otherwise responsible in whole or in part for his injury. But sometimes defendants will be held strictly liable, regardless of the care they took, simply because they caused the injury. In addition to strict liability and negligence-based torts, there are also intentional torts, which were often recognized as common law crimes. You don't need a statute to know that murder, rape, and robbery are not only torts, but crimes as well. Reason alone tells you that. What distinguishes such acts from ordinary torts is something called mens re, or a guilty mind the intent to do harm, not just doing harm by accident. Such acts bring us to criminal law, but criminal law involves much more. For starters, a person who intentionally injures another cannot simply compensate his victim for losses like medical bills, foregone income, and pain and suffering. Criminals attack our dignity. Indeed, what would a wealthy rape victim care about mere financial compensation? Worse still, how does mere compensation address or deter the actions of a wealthy rapist or child molester? It's simply the cost of engaging in his sordid business. We come then to the need for compensation and punishment to remedy such crimes. But there's another reason too for punishing criminals by for example, incarcerating them. It's because by their actions, they have flaunted justice and created fear in the community. Thus, crimes are not simply private, but public wrongs. Criminals are subject not simply to civil suits by their victims, but to criminal prosecution by the public. An accused criminal defendant still has rights, of course, for there's often uncertainty surrounding a criminal prosecution including whether the defendant is guilty as charged. Criminal trials with complex procedural rules, striking a balance between the defendant's and the public's rights, are aimed at resolving that uncertainty. But even before trial, we need rules about arrest and interrogation, the gathering of evidence, and more. 
Striking that balance is difficult, but not impossible. Regrettably, in far too many countries, it is struck in favor of the government and innocent defendants pay the price. Still, other problems plague modern criminal justice systems. Since defendants are often poor, they cannot afford legal counsel, and the public's interest in punishing usually trumps the criminal victim's right to compensation. There are practical solutions to both problems, but they're often overwhelmed by another problem, overcriminalization, and it has two sources. First, unlike under common law, much criminal liability today arises under complex and obscure statutes and regulations, which means that many people have no idea that they're breaking the law, yet they're held strictly liable despite the normal mens re requirement for criminal liability. Tax laws, business regulations, campaign finance rules, and more are the fonts of this problem. Second, victimless crimes are another source. In session nine, we'll turn to the war on drugs. Suffice it to say here that we'd have more time and resources to address real crime if we didn't criminalize merely disapproved behavior. In summary, a free society needs tort law to help deter acts that injure others and ensure that those injured are made whole again. Second, intentional torts lead to criminal law and the need for victim compensation and punishment. But third, overcriminalizations undercut those worthy goals.